Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what a cube sounds like. If you ever want to measure the voltage of something, you can use something like this called a voltmeter or a multimeter. For example, let's say I want to measure the voltage between these two leads here. Whoa! <laughs> you just connect both ends to the lead and you can see there's 110 volts and this is direct current. And then you can also use it to measure the regular power that you get in your home. But this is AC current, so we switch it to AC now, stick it in here. I get 121.5 volts AC. But you can see this doesn't tell me much about this alternating current. We know it's alternating, it's called AC current, but how fast is it alternating? Well, in order to measure that, you need a different tool. And that's where this tool comes into play. This is called an oscilloscope, or just a scope for short. Now this is meant to measure lower voltages, so if I want to measure my line voltage, I'm going to lower the voltage a little bit, but it'll still have the same alternating current signal. But now let's see what that looks like on the oscilloscope. So it doesn't look like much, but we just need to zoom out a little bit. There we go, so now we can actually see the alternating current, or alternating voltage in this case. And if you look right here, this small F equals up the top here, this is F equals 60 hertz. So that's the frequency at which the voltage alternates from positive to negative in your house. So that means a lot of the time the voltage is actually zero. That's why when you film things in slow motion, you actually see lights blinking at around 60 hertz or 60 times per second. So this tool is really cool because you can measure really high frequencies with it. So really fast alternating current. And what's one thing that I have that has really fast alternating current? My Tesla coil. So this is a lot faster oscillation, it just kind of looks like a blur here. It's alternating at 1.28 megahertz. So 1.28 million times per second. So I can still zoom in on this scale though and see it. So you can already see the oscilloscope's a really cool tool, but it gets even cooler than this. Now before we continue, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of great classes for anyone who loves learning. For example, I just finished a class in Adobe Premiere and another one in After Effects to improve my editing skills. There are so many classes on their platform and so many different skills to learn. I like Skillshare because each class that I've taken on there has been really useful with high quality teaching that actually helps me improve. You can also meet like-minded people and join diverse communities on Skillshare. So if you want to try Skillshare, the first thousand of my viewers to sign up through the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now let's get back to our experiment. So you can see there are two channels here, so I can have two probes, turn on the other one. Right now both of these channels are plotted voltage, so an alternating voltage versus time. So it changes through time. But what you can also do is just plot these voltage one versus voltage two. So don't plot them versus time, but just have one voltage on the x-axis and another one on the y-axis. So now's where you can do some really cool stuff. If I hook up both channels to two different inputs, so this purple one's coming from my computer and the yellow one's coming from my iPhone here. So now if we go to the x-y view, you can see with both of them off, there's just a dot on the screen. But if I play one of them, you can see that's just kind of the side view of that alternating sine wave. So it's just alternating back and forth across the screen like that. So we're not seeing the change through time, we're just seeing the change in voltage relative to the other one. So it's just going back and forth. But now if I turn the other one on, you can see that we get a circle. So what that looks when we do it versus time, you can see that they're offset a little bit. And so if you do just the X, Y view, this voltage plotted versus this one, you can see we easily get a circle. So stop one of them. It's a line, start the other one, it's a circle. Well, that's like a perfect circle. So to get a perfect circle, they just have to be offset like that, and that makes a circle. So you can see how you can easily start to generate images just by sending in two different sine waves to the oscilloscope. But what's really cool is if we change this not to the same frequency, but I'm gonna change one of them to just a little bit different. So the yellow one's at 250 hertz, and now I'm gonna change the purple one to 230 hertz. So a slightly different frequency from each other now. So now let's see what this looks like on there. So now look at this cool image it creates. So now you can start to see how you can draw some really cool things just by sending in these different frequencies. 
In fact, it's so easy to draw images like this, the first computers built in the 1950s actually just used oscilloscopes as the screen. So it uses way less processing power for a computer to use vectors than it is to use bitmaps and digital data. One of the first computers that had a screen was called the Sage in the 1950s. And it was used for the military to display maps and incoming aircraft. And it was actually on this Sage computer that the very first image of a human being was ever made on a computer screen. And what do you think that image was with a bunch of male engineers in the military? So this image was created by an unknown engineer in around 1955 to 1958. They aren't quite sure, but this is the very first image of a human ever on a computer screen. What's really cool is I can even do this and see how this kind of looks like a ball moving back and forth. Actually, one of the first video games ever produced was displayed on an oscilloscope just like this, and it was called Tennis for Two. So we know that oscilloscopes can be used to draw images. Now one cool thing that artists have been doing is instead of just using an electrical signal that makes the image that you want on the oscilloscope, they actually match those frequencies to be able to make audible sound if you play it through a speaker. So the electrical signal is just a regular electrical signal, but it happens to match up to sound if you play it through a speaker or your earphones. So this is just a regular 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so the regular kind that you would plug in earphones with. And then the end of it gets split into this RCA cable. So these two ends here are the left audio and the right audio that you would get in your earphones. So what I can actually do is just plug in my oscilloscope to these cables. So here's one channel and then the other channel here. Then I'm just gonna plug this into the audio jack of my computer. So if instead of sending it to the oscilloscope, I sent it to headphones, this is what it would sound like. So now you can see if you change the waves to different patterns that look something like this, what do you think this looks like? Well, if you just plot instead of versus time, one voltage versus the other, then you can get this. So this is what a cube sounds like. So what's really cool is to make these audio files that you can send to an oscilloscope to make a picture, somebody actually wrote a pretty cool program called Raviscopio. And basically to use this, all you do is first draw some random shape and save it as an SVG file. And then you import it into the program. And as soon as you import it, it automatically makes a dot .wav file, so an audio file that you can just send to your oscilloscope. And it will make that same image. So I'm gonna play this audio file. So now it'll show up on the screen. So just this random shape I drew shows up on the screen. So if you ever wanna draw on your oscilloscope by yourself, this is a cool way to do it that's really easy. There's actually really cool websites like this oscilloscopemusic.com where you can hear really cool music that actually shows cool pictures when you play it on an oscilloscope. So it sounds cool and it looks cool. For example, this is one of their creations they made that you can actually purchase and download on their website. It's really cool. So you can see it playing my, on my oscilloscope here. So this is a person riding a bike through trees on my oscilloscope. <laughs> Now my specific oscilloscope I have here isn't a great one. The refresh rate on the XY plot isn't very fast, and so it's kind of blotchy and doesn't show up great. But there's a lot better ones if you want to spend more money. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And check out theactionlab.com where I have some science experiments for sale. And also we have a really cool Muso black painting for sale. My wife painted this and she reprints it but paints the actual black hole in Muso black. So it looks extremely black. We're almost out of stock of these. So if you want to get it, get it now at theactionlab.com or click the link in my description. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.